back at it and we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it again so we have the whole thing serviced if you watched the last video i'm not going to run through it all but we have it serviced now and a lot of filters changed we have to service the hydraulic system there's a filter in there under that seat there's another one over on the far side that needs to be changed but before we do any of that we must deal with the bigger issues start at the front is the rams they're leaking away too much oil she's pouring oil out of her oil is expensive and it's just not practical to have oil spilling everywhere so anywhere she goes the pan follows so that one there on the bottom is already loose so that means the pressure's off it so we can take that one apart first so we're going to leak some oil it's inevitable i might actually go down to the shop beside me get two blank caps or four blank caps just let her bleed out for a minute right that's that one Come on in. Handy enough. Oh, she's a heavy brute. So that was the easy end. This one's going to be a wee bit more fun. That split pin looks like it's been through the wall. There we go. Jesus. That's a tough specimen. If I take this ram off here, there's always going to be a certain amount of downward pressure on that and the bucket is probably going to tilt up in the air and it's, it could be a bit of a problem. Now I can jack it up there and that means it's sitting jacked up for a while while I get these repaired. But I'm thinking, just fix the tilt ones first and when I get them fixed, lift it up in the air, tilt the bucket over, drop the bucket facing this side down and that will take the complete weight of them rams there. It'll be a much safer job to do, much easier for me. The loader will be sitting lovely and safe as well and yeah, I think that'll work. So right or wrong, amateur at the job here, that's the way I'm going to do it. Again, good pin, nowhere. The only thing I'm noticing is a real shortage of grease. Well, that split pin was just literally sitting in the hole. That's how much was caught in the hole. So, yeah. And that's the reason why you have to go around and check everything. That'd be some fun if that pin come out and you in the middle of using it. Just trying to push out this way. Down. There we go. Right, so that's our two rams off. I'm just after noticing something. When I had the two rams side by side, they're different. Well, this one's obviously longer. Even with the extension that was put on it, it's longer anyway. And um, it comes out to here originally. So it's a different ram. And you can see this here. Well, these are facing that way. These are facing straight up. Probably doesn't make a whole big deal of difference. Anyway, I'm not going to pull them apart just yet to figure out which is the right one. I have a feeling this is the one I'm going to be pulling apart here. But I'm going to go down and have lunch here and I'm going to look up on the old interweb and see which one looks right. Also, these pins here, I'll get a couple of new split pins. Most of them's all right, but a couple of them does need to be replaced. So I'll clean all the old sticky, gluey stuff off. Thankfully, they can be reused again. Nowhere at all on them. Which would explain from the story the guy told me that I bought it off. He said we rarely ever use the front loader. It was all back actor work. Hence the reason there's so much wear on it compared to this. This is real tight. Very little play on any of the joints. Next job we can do is rehang this door because we're getting a lot of rain now. Well, we're getting it all summer, but it's winter time. And I'd like to get a, a door flung onto this here. Let's see, can we do something with that? This is our door. And the problem with our door is one good hinge, no hinge. Latch, 
is the cab twisted because it goes in there and I presume it's supposed to go in there too and it's not going in this could be the real reason why this door wasn't hung I have it propped underneath and I have it pushed in that it sits in but you can see here my issue the gap that's here versus the gap that's here is pretty significantly different and also it's tight there but look at the way it's moving back as it goes up I think the cab has a wee twist in it if you shake them they move and flex quite a bit so I don't know why it has moved back the way it has but there's a few ways you can fix it we can come along take this window out we can unbolt this cross member that's going across here and then we can pull this out and weld it back into place and refabricate it and do a real good job on it or So I found this is probably going to be the easiest option and work out every bit is good so this needs to sit there that's where that frame needs to be I'm going to put the door back on and just check it and when we get the door on I'm going to move this out here as well and we're going to weld it into a new spot the door should sit in now right yeah so the door sits in now Got plenty of movement there, so what I'm going to do is this gap here. I'm going to put a screwdriver in. I'm going to force these two out that they meet, and then we're going to use a wee bit of steel and put it into that gap, cut it to size, and extend it, and that will hopefully leave our door that at least it's in the right spot and it can close. There she is. Now, you could spend ages at that, rooting and tearing at it. And I will, I'll file it down another wee bit before I put paint on it. But hey, it's solid, it's now extended. Next thing to do is just sit the door onto it. That's our door on there now, I was just propping it to make sure it lined up with the latch. And everything looks good now, the lanes look, well, all right. They're good enough, you'd know she was crashed. So my next job to do now is just put on the hinge. This is actually an unusual hinge. I've never seen one of these before. See this chamfer that's here? When the door opens, it lifts the door as the door opens. And say if you had a door where the outside of the ground was uneven and you're opening it kind of uphill, this here would allow you to do that as the door will lift as it opens. Never seen one of these before, but we're not using it for that reason on this. I'm gonna simply sit it on there now. It's the only hinge I could find that was the same here without having to bend the hinge, so I'm going to have to modify it. So there is our hinge on and on. I grinded it down. You wouldn't have to, but I grinded it down a bit because we problem with my welder. Um, just wasn't getting the feed versus the voltage right. And um, the gas was coming out perfectly. The tip was lovely and clean. It's a hit and miss that welder. Welds great inside. Outside it welds okay for about 10 minutes and then next thing it starts to sputter and you're all the time trying to get it well right. But anyway, we have it welded and it's good and strong there now. I'll put a bit of yellow paint over it. And there we are. There's the way she opens. And I've got a nice weld on the inside there too. But at least with it closed, it'll keep the rain and stuff from getting into the cab. So we're after applying a bit of yellow paint there. I heated it up with the blowtorch. It's not the right time of year for painting, but it'll cover it. It'll stop it from rusting until we do something with the rest of it. Seeing we're at the fabrication and I have the welder already out here behind me, we're going to tackle into making brackets for these lights on both sides. I have 
a replacement light for these. These are big old bulky thing and they aren't the originals. The originals would have been up here, that's the holes for them. And would have been a round light originally, two round lights I think. But I'm not going down that route again, I'm just going to stick a clean simple LED light on it, the same as what we put on the backs. But before we do any more on the digger, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsors. We don't often do sponsor stuff, but today is an exception. This actually was sent to us quite a few months ago. The offer was to take them, try them out, use them for a bit, and if I like them, give them a mention. If not, send them back. And that is the way it was left to me. So they're here still, which is a good sign. Jump starters are quite common now. There's any amount of them online if you go and look. So this is just a big battery pack. So the outputs in this one is five volts, uh, nine volts, and 12 volts. So in this case that comes with it, you've got your two leads here. Peel this little by here across. You jump your plugs in there. Then these two guys here will just plug onto your battery. Once you have it plugged onto the battery, switch on your power, and I have it charged up here, it's at 100%. And um, so there's two options. You can have a boost here as well if the battery is completely dead or it's a real cold morning you can click on the boost and that'll give you an instant boost that you need to get the car to start or whatever it is you're starting so on this one here if you hold the power button you have an led light there too if you press it again it gets that strobe and one more time you have a slower strobe and then just hold the power button and it turns it off i've actually used it for this here which i find really really handy um usb when I'm out and about and I'm bringing my cameras and stuff with me, especially my drone as well, you can charge a lot on this. Just plug it into the USB and it's charging all the time. And I found that actually handier than anything else. Yes, it's there. If you needed a yoke to start, we have masses. They're easy starters. Jerry might like something like this. But that's what I use it for, one big battery for charging all the stuff. If you're out on the go, a laptop or anything, just plug it into it and you're ready to go. But the thing that I really enjoyed using was this guy. And this again, topped on, the TC004, a thermal imaging camera. I had something similar, um, just a real cheap one, which didn't really last that terrible long. I still have it, but it's not great. So you have these little arrows that pop around. You have a red, a white, and a green one. Uh, the red one is just down here in the corner. And what they're doing is they're searching all the time. The red one will pick up the hot spots, while the green one will pick up all the cold spots. The white one's just giving you an idea of where you are, just the center of the screen. You can see what Hudson looks like. So Hudson's quite warm and probably sweating his after we for a wee bit of a run. But yeah, it gives a great detail on just the warmer spots like his eyes, around his nose, just with the heat coming out of his nose. Say if you're working on electrics, if you have a short somewhere on your system, a short will always build up a resistance and resistance generates heat. So if you were going along electronic board in for instance, or working even on something like this where you had a short somewhere, you will see that short as a hot spot. It will eliminate a lot of time searching around to see where it is. I see a lot of guys using these on electronic boards and stuff, fixing computers and things like that. And to charge it here on the top, you have USB, and this here is your SD card. So when you're doing recordings or whatever, you can pop out your SD card and you have it all there. Hook it into a computer. If you're working for someone or using it on a job site, at least you're able to show it to them on a laptop. I have lots of projects I'd be fit to use them on. But if you're interested in them and all, all the info will be in the description. You can go and check them out, price them. Whatever you want to do, it'll all be there. Let's get back to it. All right, I'm surprised it even loosened. Oh. Another thing I like to see is these boys here, these block connectors. I absolutely hate them with a passion. It's bad enough there's a block connector, but there's nothing around it and all the moisture from the wheel goes into it. So that's all corroded. There's no opening that, and I'd say the connection is even lost going through it. When you're working on this stuff, take plenty of pictures. It will save you an awful hassle when you're putting it all back together again. It doesn't take long to do, but it's well worth doing. So I bought two of these lights. Now it's a bulky enough light. And that's the issue there that I have already with it. Now, there's two ways I can do this. I can cut it in here and embed it right into the mud guard and build the frame at the back of it. Not that terribly hard to do. I'm thinking of putting it here. Just up there where you'd normally have it in a more modern tractor. So what I have here is a bit of piping. What is that? Half inch. And I'm going to weld that on there. And then I'm going to make up a plate that's going to work as a mount for that light on its own. Now 
Now we just mark out our two holes. A very simple way to mark it is just bring it back and forth a wee bit. Right, so we have our plate here now. So what we're going to do is just unscrew these bys here. Now this fella should fit in here. So all I'm going to do now is trace around that and then we're going to cut it out. So now we have our bracket. The next thing we have to do is just weld that pipe right over that hole. And that'll be that bit done. There's a hole here now to take the wire. They've checked in here, there's no pipes or cables running up this. You always have to be real careful, even when you're we we're cutting the frame for the door, you always have to be real careful there's no wires and stuff because a lot of the wires in the modern tractors and pipes for heating and stuff goes up these. So don't ever bore into something unless you've checked that there's nothing coming up at the top. So now that we have that hole drilled, just right there, I'm just very lucky that straight down. Well, there already is a hole right underneath it that I didn't have to touch or drill. It must have been there for a wire previous, or maybe, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, there's just there, it goes straight up. So that's going to make life easier for me. We have our two brackets done. Which I did spray on some paint here. It's quick drying paint, so it is dry already. It's just Massey Ferguson Industrial Yellow. It's only to stop it rusting over the winter time. I just have to paint this other one. I have to put another coat of paint on it yet. But masked up. But it's fitted just like the other one. And we're ready to fit our lights. The material that washes put on here first. And two little split washers. Just put these two little nuts on here. Favourite wee bit. There you have it. I know there's going to be a lot of people will say, Adrian, you'll need something behind this to protect it. That's actually a very heavy duty light and it'll take a lot to smash it. And it's not to say There'll always be something to smash it, but I don't think it's going to be that vulnerable because the mud guard comes out further than it. So whatever you go again is going to hit the mud guard first. Uh, it's not hard for me, and I can't do it at the minute because I need to straighten all these mud guards to make something that will go around it here and protect it, but I'll see. I'm not going to wire these yet. It's like I said when I put these lights in, everything is sitting here underneath, ready to be hooked up. It won't be very hard to hook it up, but I'm not wiring anything until I get the dash sorted. Just so I can be sure that everything is right. Um, that won't take very long to do. Well, the hooking up won't take long to do. The actual wire on the dash, it's going to take a bit of time. Probably not going to video much of it because it's very boring work and it's shocking slow. It could take two days to actually do that dash. To do it right. These wires here will all be fit to be tucked away. And do away with all these bits and pieces of metal. There's no need for them now anymore. Just tidy the whole thing up. But one thing I do want to do is I don't want to leave all these holes like that. So I want to fill these holes in. Well, that's all the smaller ones filled. Now, just to do these two big ones, so I'll have to put a wee bit of steel in, in these. That's a bit thick. 
Tick. Perfect. That's what we want right there. Our apologies, it's starting to get dark here. I'm going to finish up now in a half an hour, but this little disc is what I made. I have it just sitting here on the end of my magnet, and I chamfered the edges. And the same here, I chamfered the edges around there too. That just allows the weld place to sit. So I'm going to sit this by in here now. And see him, he just sits in there. Now we're going to tack it in and weld it in place. Alright, I don't know if you can see it or not. But there it is, that's a holes filled. It's very cold. Ears are starting to get nipped, but we've got a lot of work done. And believe it or not, the small jobs, but they're still important ones. Getting the door on, getting the lights done, getting the rams off, and I'll get them pulled apart tonight to get the seals and all ready to go. Maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll do a run, and we have a lot of stuff to pick up then at the one time, which we're looking at some of it here. This guy, I know it gets asked a lot, what we're we doing with it. Well, we have a new one of those, not new. We've uh, used one of those sitting waiting for us. And we have a used one of these brackets sitting waiting for us as well. I'm hopeful that we can get the glass on the far side. There is stuff that isn't Perspex, there's a name on it. It's supposed to not fade like Perspex for the other window. We'll see. That's one thing I will say, I have people offer me stuff left, right and centre. Even this slew motor. There's a guy in the UK actually offered me one of those that is off a machine that has barely been used it's like new so so i appreciate all them offers i'm not going to take anything yet until we really need to because i think this slew motor is actually there's a bit of drift on it a lot of them have that but we'll not know until we see the splines underneath to see what they're like and if they are completely thrashed out in it then we look at them options but for now we're not going to be hasty we're not going to just pull off and replace until we see what the stuff is actually like sometimes the drift back and forth in the slough can actually be coming from the block itself just needs to be cleaned and so we'll know more on that as we dig into it there's a lad here that i want to look at but this guy here hangs on the knees and i've been looking around and i can't see where it's supposed to go so if someone's got a picture they could send me where that's supposed to go up here there's so many pipes and stuff it's hard to see but if someone knows where that's supposed to go let me know our holes that we fixed I've just put a bit of primer over them and stopped them from rusting, but they filled in nicely. A lot of work to be done on the fender. And the best way of doing that is just to weld on a couple of bolts, pull it straight back out, put a bit of heat onto it and pull it back out. And a lot of them dints will actually pull out. Another one thing as well is that pot, that is not full of oil. That is full of antifreeze. We've had minus four here in the last few days and you can still see the, how cold it is. There's ice everywhere. So I didn't want to chance it with the coolant in this because I didn't know what it was like. I actually thought it was just water was in it. But when I let it out, I was pleasantly enough surprised it was really clean and a good color to it. it seemed like there was good antifreeze in it, but it was no harm just to drain out completely anyway. And we put new antifreeze into it. There was no leaks, thankfully, no leaks at all in the cooling system. And to see it clean like that was a good sign. So we'll put new coolant into it as well. We will do all the four rams at the one time in the one video and get that whole front end all fixed up i'm hoping that'll be our next video which hopefully won't be long because i'm planning on making that trip tomorrow it's another wee bit of progress it's going to be slow and it's going to be steady there'll be no big rushing in and diving in and trying to get it all done in one video it's not going to work like that because i only work on this when i get a few hours to spare maybe two three hours max in a day every second third day is what i get to work on this i'm not going to rush it i'm just going to take my time and enjoy it and that's what this was all about thanks for watching Till the next one, see you again.